Hey, it's Heather. Welcome to night six, marking the end of this week's training videos. I made my commitment um, to do this for you guys for the week because I really want everyone to hit this fourth quarter in stride with a plan and a good implementation strategy for sustainable health, whatever your goal is, whether it's getting healthy, getting off of meds, being more fit, losing weight. Um, and I made my commitment. I took action and I made it happen. I might this afternoon have snuck in soccer games, booster shots, a street fair, and some little boy toenail painting, <laughs> but I still made it. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about overcoming obstacles to starting, implementing, and maintaining healthy habits. But first, I'm going to talk about something that almost instantly lowers my stress level. And I swear I can feel the muscles in my shoulders relax when I give myself permission to do this one thing. And I hope it has the same effect on you. But before I get into the details, if you don't already know me, I'm Dr. Heather Hammerstead. I'm emergency medicine boarded, lifestyle medicine boarded, and an integrative nutrition coach for longer than I want to date myself for. Um, and I'm the humbled owner and founder of a whole list where we personalize teams of coaches to help people really figure out how their brains and bodies work around food and creating these sustainable health patterns, real food, real work, real results. Give me a love if you are here and excited and appreciative <laughs> and drop a live or a replay so Facebook can push this up um, into the comments for me. Um, let me know you're calling from, watching from. So um, now for that stress reliever. Um, think about this question for a minute. Um, what would your health and fitness look like if it was easy? Um, the fact is most of us love to make things complicated. It's so common. There's even a term for it. Complexity bias. Complexity bias is when you decide to make a change in almost any area of your life and all of a sudden you start thinking about ways to make that change even better or more effective. So you start like layering in some new rules or extra guidelines to add juice to your results. Have you ever done that? I know I used to and I know I fall into that habit a lot even now. It can really lead you down the rabbit hole of like, I should try that or I should try this, right? And so we get squirrel brain. <laughs> so simple is when you follow... These are examples. Simple with food is when you follow author Michael, Michael Pollan's advice to eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Complex is when you end up counting every macro of every food that crosses your lips or searching for the elusive but perfect intermittent fasti fasting ratio for your body or routine or the supplement that's going to get there, right? So simple in terms of movement is getting in your 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week just over the week. Complex is arranging your schedule so you can get in 30 minutes of fasted cardio first thing in the morning and then coming home and doing a certain amount of strength training after work and being super vigorous on a daily basis. So if you have to choose between those two options, the simple or the complicated, we usually choose the complicated one because we think it's going to be better, right? The problem with all of that is that it can be really hard to keep up with over time. Don't get me wrong. Complex choices are not bad, especially if they make you feel more accomplished or if you're training for a big event or if they're for like a very focused amount of time to get you over the hump of something. But if they make you feel stressed, overwhelmed, and or get in the way of being consistent or what usually happens is you start to like resist and avoid it, right? Then it's time to streamline and just get simple. And you can do that by focusing on the simplest results, getting actions that Work with your lifestyle and your schedule, include activities or food you actually like. <laughs> and another huge way to simplify it is uh, is really to work with an experienced coach. You can custom fit a program that works for you in your life. The most important thing is that you choose actions that help you stay consistent that you don't hate. <laughs> so go back to the other lives this week and watch again. Um, you'll see simplicity is key in the planning we talked about and execution and your motivation and your moderation. Let me know in the comments if this makes sense. Yes? Good. So another obstacle that I'm going to talk about today is a little controversial among fitness and health coaches. And it is um, the D word, um, detoxes. And it might just change how you think about them, either pro or con. Okay, so a lot of people love the idea of like doing a detox. And let me know what your experiences have been in, in the comments. 
exactly what a detox includes depends on who you're talking to and what their training might be or their focus might be. It might involve different foods. Mostly it's probably different drinks or supplements, um, spending more time in the bathroom, <laughs> massages, you name it. Basically it's about trying to create a clean, healthy slate for your body or maybe to lose a few pounds. But let's forget about all that for a second because I have a suggestion that might flip your thinking a little bit. What if instead of detoxing the body, we detox what we put in on or around our bodies? The fact is your body already has an amazing built-in system that gets rid of waste and toxins. It includes your liver, kidneys, skin, lungs, and large intestine. Unfortunately, our modern lifestyles and habits tend to make it harder for our organs to do their jobs. But you can help turn that around by cutting back on the toxins your body has to deal with. This approach helps you reach your goals and feel better too. So why is this in here as an obstacle section? Because many health and wellness coaches are going to tell you to detox, usually to start out a program, but the strictness and the restriction of it can be a huge mental and physical obstacle to doing what you should be doing to actually get your body to detox itself efficiently and effectively. Um, if you're here, give me a, a hello um, in the comments. Give me a love. So Facebook shows this up for other people. Um, tell me where you're from. Give me a replay if you're watching on replay. Um, okay. So with that in mind, how do we get our bodies to detox effectively and efficiently? Here are seven ways that health coaches um that we are us as health coaches. Sorry, I got distracted by children coming in. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. Um, by children coming into the room with their little newly painted toenails. Okay. These are seven ways that, that uh, are very well uh, known reasons for you to naturally detox yourself. Number one, and I think everyone knows this, limiting your alcohol, your liver performs a lot of functions every day that support your health. Too much alcohol can make it harder for it to do its normal jobs one of which is helping your body get rid of toxins. So watching your alcohol intake is one way to support it. Easier said than done. And I'm one of those people, easier said than done. Experts recommend lim limiting alcohol to one drink a day for women and two for men. So just keep that in mind. And if you struggle with alcohol, ask for help um, or don't drink at all if you can't um, put, a, put a lid on it, so to speak. Um, there are medicines that people can prescribe to help you. Number two, get enough sleep. Um, during the day, waste builds up in your brain. And then at night when you're sleeping, it's swept away. Like not enough sleep can mean for a buildup at that waste. Not only that, like we've talked about other times this week, your brain helps you process the day. It helps, um, anti-anxiety. It helps the hormones for weight regulation and hunger hormones really balance out as well as your stress hormones. Really important. Um, seven to nine hours a day slash night is what the recommendation is. Number three, drink your water. Water performs many different functions for your body. And that's why we talk about it all the time. One of them is helping your body's detox system really re remove waste products from your blood. And number four, this one's kind of related to your water intake. Don't eat too much salt. Um, among other things, it can really lead your to your body retaining water, which can in the way get in the way of removing those waste products from your blood. Um, Number five, avoiding sugary and processed foods. We're going to talk this all about in the third obstacle next, but eating high calorie food that is low in nutrients is linked to chronic diseases like obesity and diabetes, which can hurt your organs, like your kidneys and your liver that really help your body's detox system. I like to think about sugary and processed foods as being like the gunk inside of the pipes in your house that like things don't go through the pipes to where they're supposed to do go to get that really nutrient and hormone filled blood um, to and from your detox organs and the rest of them, your eyes and everything else. So that's what that food is kind of doing to the inside of you. But that gives you a, an idea um, of that clog, um, which is why people lose kidney function and eyesight and have heart attacks and strokes and all those things. Um, number six, be active. Exercise and regular activity lowers inflammation and helps boost your body's ability to detox. Absolutely. You can just imagine your muscles are moving and pushing that blood flow through and getting it where it needs to go. Kidneys and liver are able to do what they do. And 
you pee and poop it all out. <laughs> um, number seven, uh, this one is external to you. Choose your self-care and your home cleaning products carefully. Um, I, I am, I'm not selling anything, just saying that using natural products on your body and in your home can really help cut your exposures to chemicals that you may not really know what they are. And you can take all of that to the next level by eating a high fiber unprocessed plant full diet that's rich in antioxidants. That really helps your digestive system stay on track. It helps lower your risk of diseases, makes your gut microbiome, which we've talked about ad nauseum on all of our, our gut trainings and all the blog posts I've done on this of really um, helping that gut flora, all those healthy bacteria help with your sleep hormones, your hunger hormones, your mood hormones, as well as your digestion. Um, so when you support your body with a healthy lifestyle that works with your schedule and your goals, you don't need a quick fix detox. Does that make sense? All right. Um, let me switch my banner here. We're going to talk a little bit about um, unprocessing our food, which as everybody knows, one of my favorite topics, it's really what we do here at Holist. You've heard, so you've heard about this obstacle for me a lot. And I'm going to tell you um, what I think is pretty much the number one non mindset related issue that's holding people back from their goals really helps um, really also stops them from feeling their very best day in and day out. It's a topic that gets me very fired up. So I hope you're ready. Are you still here? Give me a love for Facebook tax uh, and some comments to let me know that you're here, where you're watching from, what questions you have, and I'll come back and answer them if I don't get to them here live. Um, food is one of my favorite topics. I hear you. Okay. Um, okay. So are you ready for the number one roadblock that's stopping people from reaching their goals? FYI, this ranking is based on my years of experience, but there's plenty of science to back it up. The number one ac uh, action that stops people from reaching their health and fitness goals is eating ultra processed food. What do I mean by that? Um, I mean, frozen or prepared meals, instant noodles, soups, baked goods, like pizza, cake, cookies, packaged bread, processed cheese products, ice cream, candy, breakfast cereals, chips, crackers, other packaged snacks. I'm a salty girl myself. So that's what I struggle with. Um, processed meats, really connected to cancer, sodas and other sugary drinks kind of wasted, wasted on you. Quite a list, right? So a research study done right before the pandemic found that more than half of our daily calories came from those kind of foods. And experts think that the number may be even higher now because of how many of us changed our habits during lockdowns. The main problem is um, really like not only do these products contain less fiber, vitamins, minerals than unprocessed foods, but they also contain unhealthy added sugars, fats, and salt. Plus they're so tasty. <laughs> they make you eat more than you would at a sitting if you were eating whole foods, right? Like, um, how much they can pack into that small amount, whereas a whole food is just bulkier, right? They're also specifically designed to be craveable. So you end up eating more, not at that same time, but on a regular basis of that stuff. It's just what the food scientists creating these food products, by the way, that's what they are. They're not food, they're products. That's what they, those scientists want. They tested it to be just the right amount of sugar and salt and fat to make you desire it over and over again, get that dopamine hit to your brain that's filling up whatever it is, those the emotions that are not helping you keep that dopamine up, you end up emotionally eating and you end up buying it again. So you might notice that right after you eat these foods, you feel bloated and blah, um, but that's just the start of it. One study found that eating processed foods was linked to more than 10% increase in heart disease and strokes. Another study found that eating more than four servings of these foods a day was directly linked to a higher rate of mortality, that's death. Plus, these foods are linked with gaining weight, um, diabetes, heart disease, and a whole bunch of other problems. So your body is amazing. It is amazing now. It was amazing then. It'll be amazing in the future. Um, it deserves better than to be fed a diet of these types of foods, the food products I'm talking about. So I hope this info reframes your thinking a little bit about processed food. The fact is it can take time and patience to retain your taste buds, but it's definitely worth the effort before you know it. You're like something that like a fruit or a vegetable is going to taste so sweet that you can't even believe you didn't notice that before. 
um, and you, and you're going to eat, like you'll eat a piece of candy or something like that. And you're going to be like, Whoa, like way too much. I promise it does happen. And you and your body will be so glad that you made these choices. Does that all make sense? What questions do you guys have? Put it in the comments, especially if this changed your perspective enough for you to make a change. I really think it's super important that we understand why it is that we should be making these ch chances. Not, not, so if you're not just doing it for like a number on the scale, because y'all know you're not going to stick with it. It's just for a number, right? Like you need to know how my brain is working, how my body is working, like why this is important for me, how this is affected by my community, uh, by socioeconomics, by the food science industry. It's all essential. This is why we cover so much of this in our whole as coaching programs, because if someone's just telling you from the outside, to do, you need to do this, you know, lift this many pounds or eat this little calories. Like you're going to be like pretty soon, like, no, this is uncomfortable. I don't like to be uncomfortable. Right. But if you understand why we are making recommendations, you're going to be that much more likely to, to like really internalize it and come from an internal um, motivation. So that's why we do these kind of things. Let me just change my sticker over here. All right. We're going to talk about another obstacle, finding the time for health and fitness. Well, the, one of the t this is one of the top reasons people say that they don't have a fitness or a wellness or a food routine is because they say they don't have enough time. Literally, like almost every single woman who gets on the phone with us for a strategy call um, says this. So I know that you're thinking the same thing. So I'm going to break down a couple ways of how you might find that time not to get too dramatic, but there is a quote that sums up how important this is. If you don't make time for your wellness, eventually you will have to make time for your illness. I'm just going to pause. I'm going to say that again. If you don't make time for your wellness, eventually you will have to make time for your illness. So I have 10 ideas for helping you add more, wellness, more fitness, more healthy food choices to your daily routine. And the important thing to remember is that committing to even just five minutes can help transform your routine. Over time, once that five minutes takes root, it can grow into 30 minutes that you enjoy and actually look forward to. Um, and in terms of exercise, pretty quickly it gets you to that 150 minutes per week that we, uh, we recognize in sports medicine um, and in lifestyle medicine. So um, here we go. Give me a, a like or a love um, or put any comments in here. Um, and I know I do love that quote too. Um, all right. 10 ways to find time for your health. Number one, get up first thing in the morning um, and go for a walk or do a quick cardio session. Again, that can be five minutes on a bike, five minutes on a walk, anything just to get started with that kind of habit of getting up, putting the clothes on, walking out the door, getting onto the bike. Um, and really important to do this first thing in the morning. Again, even if it's for five minutes and you've got coffee in your hand or a newspaper in your hand, <laughs> um, just to get that habit, get those endorphins up, get the night out. Um, sometimes I do this at night when, cause when I work night shifts, it's my, my morning. But so number two, um, do the same thing during your lunch break. So I do this all the time at our slower community hospitals. None of them feel very slow anymore, but I can sometimes get 10 minutes or 15 minutes where I know that there's space between when patient results are coming. And I will literally sometimes bring some weights with me or just do a quick like five or 10 minute bar session or just walk around the hospital a little bit. Of course, I have my phone with me. Everybody knows where I am. Um, it really makes a huge difference. And if you are one of the lucky people who are actually like allowed to take lunch breaks, <laughs> then, you know, eat, uh, do it first, do like 10 minutes and then you have 20 minutes left to eat your lunch. And I swear to God, the rest of your um, afternoon is going to be so much better. Um, number three, do strength exercises while watching TV at night. So is that just some simple like glute bridges or squats or planks or just doing a couple sit-ups or if you have like little three pound weights and just experimenting doing, you know, overheads and to the sides um, really adds in some time. Number four, turn household chores into a cardio session by turning up the music and moving fast enough or dancing enough to get your heart rate up. When my kids were smaller, 
they're eight and 10 now, but even when they were like four and five, I used to still put them into one of their little backpacks and do the dishes and like sweep and move all around. And man, <laughs> they, they weighed a lot and they liked it. They ate snacks and commented on how I wasn't doing things well enough. And um, it was a good time. <laughs> Number five, turn your date nights into fun nights. So instead of just going out to dinner and having a couple drinks, which is nothing wrong with that. And I do plenty of um, go skating, go to the batting cage, go for a bike ride, go um, for us. We have this green belt through town that you can walk along the river. Um, same goes for family activity days. Just make them more movement oriented. Um, number six, have a plan for your nutrition and your workouts. And when you have a plan in place, just follow it. It sounds simple. And we've been talking about simplicity. If you go back to night one, we talked all about planning. Um, for me, I sit down once a week and I literally put in when I'm um, making food and when I am going to be working out, not necessarily what I'm going to be doing at that time, but like, I don't know about you, but I do what my phone tells me to do. I have a meeting here, I have a phone call here. I've got a zoom here. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be creating content for this here. If, if I don't put those things in there when I'm going to hang out with my kids and when I'm going to cr create our food and when I'm going to plan our food and when I'm going to work out, then guess what? Things fill in and pretty soon my calendar just looks like work. It doesn't look like me. It doesn't look like my family and those things disappear. But if you put it in there, I swear to God, you're like a 15 minute alert. I'm supposed to be getting up and moving my body in some way. Um, it really makes a big difference. Um, number seven, make an appointment in your calendar every week and block time. I just talked about this, um, the health and I got ahead of myself. Um, uh, I, it really is essential. I mean, even for like when I'm going to shop, when I'm going to prep, like, cause you know, especially us busy professional moms, like our lives are like just taken out from under us without even knowing how it happens. Um, number eight, um, find things you love, whether it's food choices or exercise choices, you'll start looking forward to it. Um, again, uh, we talked about this above, but like, you're not going to do things other people are telling you to do that you hate, right? Even if you find something that's too complex for you, you know, I'm going to make a brand new meal for three meals a day all week. Like that's just not going to happen. Right. So plan to like plan a food you really love, make a whole bunch of it, split it up over the week of when it's going to be eaten. Like or I'm going to do yoga, but I hate yoga. Or I'm going to do this like super intense, like six week, uh, you know, online course of exercise. And by week two, you're like, I hate this. <laughs> you're just not going to do it. So find things you love, find ways to make them healthier with the food choices. You can do something like culinary strategy sessions like we do, make them healthier. You still love them. Find a way you like to move your body. Try to like come up with a plan about how you can ratchet that movement up so that you're still making progress, right? Progress, not perfection. Um, and you'll start wanting to do it. And that helps you be consistent. And you're gonna actually do it. Number nine, um, get support and accountability, either in person online, sometimes all you need is a cheerleader. Yay, Holos is a good cheerleader. Um, number 10, some people are really super into fitness trackers and setting daily movement goals. And they don't want to go to bed until they meet those goals. I'm not that kind of person because I don't like to wear anything on on me. I don't know why. I, like I even wear my wedding rings around my neck. <laughs> um, but I know my kids are super into their gizmo goal, uh, movement goals. My nurses are always running around. Believe me, as an ER nurse, you can get a lot of goals in if that's motivating for you and you can get those things done during your regular day, um, then you are going to find the time to fit that in, I promise. So that's 10. <laughs> But I want to add in another way that you can make time for your health and fitness. And I, so I lied. It's 11, but it's not nearly as sexy as the list of 10, right? <laughs> um, delegate it to an experienced coach who can create a plan that works with your lifestyle, keeps you motivated, and provides accountability and support, like every step of the way. Like, I know I made the joke about the whole is cheerleader, but I'm telling you, we've helped over 600 people just like you recharge their lives, really finally understand how their bodies process food as fuel and which and when their foods can work toward their goals and how their brains are working. Like we're going to talk about this next, like how our brains are working for and against us <laughs> and figuring out more importantly, how to recognize that and then use it to kind of create the, the positive uh, uses of our brain that can really help us sustain this physical and mental health. 
So if you want to know more, again, as I always say, just say action in the comments and I or one of our team members will get a call scheduled with you as soon as possible. Because like I said at the beginning, we want you to like hit quarter four killing it. Like the last thing I want is another December where all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God, I need to make New Year's resolutions because look at where I am again. Like it's time to create a lifestyle plan for you that doesn't feel terrible you can move forward and 2023 is just going to coast in. So um, if you're struggling to find time for your wellness or fitness, sneak away for just five minutes and take action. If you're just going to take just one thing out of my list of 11, stretch, walk, meditate, just do one thing and you're going to feel so accomplished afterwards and you can build off of those um, sustainable, uh, sustainably off of those small wins into bigger goals. So I hope this helps you sneak in some of your you time for your health and wellness. Um, okay. Last one. We are going to do a little thought exercise. Um, the obstacle of yourself. <laughs> and we're going to do a challenge right now. So for the next 15 minutes, I want you to not think about purple pandas. I don't want you to imagine them romping around their bright purple panda fields. I don't want you to picture them climbing up their big purple trees or drinking from their beautiful flowing purple waterfall. It's super important for the challenge that you uh, stop thinking about purple pandas. Did you stop thinking about them yet? Okay. Now I want you to think about bright green giraffes. Imagine their long green necks stretching up to eat the leaves on the big green trees in the field nearby and their baby green giraffes are <laughs> playing and running around on thick green grass. Now, how are your purple pandas doing? They're gone, right? Well, at least they were until I asked about them. Well, this is the exact same thing that happens with your brain with the negative and positive thoughts. Trying not to think negative thoughts is always going to put your brain on a mission to think more of them and more of them and keep thinking about them and more of them, just like those purple pandas. In fact, the more you try not to think about certain things, the more you end up thinking about them. There's even a name for it, uh, the pink elephant paradox. Now, I choose giraffes and pandas, but the same difference. So here are a few examples of the negative thoughts that do not serve you. And if you keep thinking them, you're going to keep thinking them. Okay. I'm not good enough. I'm just going to quit anyway. I should be faster. I should be stronger. I should be better by now. I should be off these meds by now. I failed last time. I'm going to fail this time. Does that sound familiar? So no matter which negative thoughts may be running through your head, the more you think about them, the more likely you are to believe them because they're there. It's just like we think the celebrities are important because they're in front of us all the time, right? But when you replace those negative thoughts with positive ones like the green gra giraffes, you shift your attention and choose thoughts that serve you and support your goals. Here are a few examples of positive thoughts that do serve you. I always give it my absolute best. I show up for myself. I'm the kind of person who does what it takes. I can do anything I set my mind to or whatever feels true and authentic to you. The important thing is to remember that this is not something that happens automatically. It's an active process. But again, the, the, we all have negative thoughts, like all of us, right? We're human, but it's a choice to listen to them. So try it yourself the next time you notice negative thoughts running in your head and replace those with more positive, self-affirming thoughts. And you're going to feel like you're faking it at first. And in a way you are, you're not faking to become it. You're faking it to make it right. You're th like we we're talking about yesterday. We're, we're doing it so that we can rewire our neural pathways so that we flex those muscles um, of your brain in a new way. And you have to do that just like building strength in your muscles. You have to do that over and over and over again before the brain is going to choose that as the easiest way to go. Whereas if you're practicing the negative thought pattern over and over and over again, that is the way your brain is going to choose to go because it likes the little railroad tracks that are the easiest way. It doesn't want to have to, you know, create the new sled trail or the skin trail and two feet of snow, right? So Try, try it yourself the next time you notice those thoughts, those negative thoughts going through your head. 
And if you're ready to replace those purple pandas with the green giraffes um, so that you can like live the life you deserve. Um, we, we do this stuff all the time here at Holis, but I hope that that exercise was really helpful for you. Um, let me know in the comments if it was. Um, I'm a visual person myself. So um, just going to summarize a little bit here. That kind of wraps up the obstacle training and it wraps up this week. I really hope all of this helped you this week. Um, kids are back to school and the weather is calming down here in Idaho. It's been in the 70s finally, and it's amazing. There's less travel. Now is the time to get back on track. So you want to lose 60 pounds, we've got you. You want to lose 20 pounds, we've got you. You want to up your fitness game, we've got you. You need culinary strategy help, we've got you. you want full on mindset transformation and mental fitness, we've got you. We can personalize whatever you need with this amazing group of coaches that we've put together. We're a big holist family. Um, we've got you. We can personalize whatever you need with this amazing group of coaches. So if you're thinking, I know what to do. I just need to do it. I promise you that you are missing some key pieces because otherwise you would have done it. So there's no time like the present to take action and pri prioritize yourself Get your body and your brain to wherever you want it to be. Improve your self-confidence, your self-image, sleep better. You want to actually have sex <laughs> because you aren't pinching your own sides. Have more energy. Be more fit. Chase those kids or grandkids and do it with real food. No gimmicks, no supplements, no fads. Real science, real work in the context of your own unique life in a personalized way so that you just don't restrict and rebel and stop doing it when we're gone. I'm pretty sure if you're still here <laughs> that you have done all the things and all the programs and is this really going to work for me? Trust me, I've heard it a million times. That's what everyone says before they start with us. If you come in, trust us, do the work, do the learning, ask for help. You will not believe how transformative it is. Uh, if you guys know me by now, watching me over the last four years, talking on videos like this constantly, like I'm a physician. Not only that, I'm an emergency physician, and my personality is to be very direct and very truthful, and there's no BS. So that's the way the learning is. It also is in us telling you how this is. I'm, I'm not BSing you. It is transformative. There's nothing like us out there. I'm not bragging, just telling you how it is. <laughs> so if I've amped you up, if you schedule a strategy call with us for the next three days, I have been alluding to this all week. I am offering $400 off of the premium weight wellness program and adding in an extra free mindset coaching with it. You can't beat this. Honestly, I've never done this before. But like I said, I'm stoked for September. Um, a couple of my strategy coaches were like, Heather, like, it's time. Let's do this. Let's offer. And I was like, let's go. So we're all on board. We just want you to get the September rev up. So again, you're not so more, you're not more miserable by December. Like, do you really want to weight gain another 10 pounds or lose that much more muscle mass um, by December? Do you want to have a couple more medicines added on? Like, what is it that you want to avoid? Where is it most importantly, getting rid of those negative thoughts of where I might be is those positive thoughts of where I may be by then. If you take action now, losing eight to 10% of your body weight in 12 weeks. Yep. Imagine how you'd be at Christmas. Since everything is personalized, we can tailor your program and give price on a strategy call based on what it is you actually need. But rest assured, we have a very generous, affordable payment plan available. So what are you waiting for? Let's start on Monday. So whole.me call is the link to sign up for a call. Make sure you, um, and I'll put that in the comments. Um, Make sure you tell your coach that uh, you are coming through this week's training to get the bonus or if it's easier, just drop the word action into the comments here and we'll schedule you ASAP and mark you as a bonus. I'll mark you as bonus worthy myself. So action, 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 because as good as reading and watching is, um, information consumption is not going to get you where you want to go. Action, action, action. So type it into the comments and we'll help you. So take care, everyone, and see you soon. Um, oh, and hold on a second. I said I was going to put that into the links. Um, there we go. Um, keep your eye on the Curate Health Facebook group. We have a five-day clean eating challenge that we're running starting Monday. So put the word clean into the comments, and we'll get you signed up. 
So that's five days of emails and video trainings on specifics of clean eating and nutrition nerdiness. Um, of course, if you're going to hop in and join the actual coaching program on Monday, you don't want to do both things at the same time. You're going to get a million times more information and challenges and work to do in your personalized program with Holist anyway. Um, but if you are still working on voyeuring and inf information <laughs> consuming instead of taking action, we are going to be doing that challenge next week. And that's free. So can't wait to see your name on our call schedule for that strategy call with that action into the comments. Let's do this. Let's be who we want to be in December. Okay. Thanks guys. It's been a great week and I'll see you soon.